How's it going guys? It's Tactics HD here bringing you episode 4 of my NHL 12 build in another Dynasty series. Now as you guys can see I'm being the Vancouver Canucks. If you missed my last episode I finished being the Ducks and they did offer me a chance to resign but I decided to go with the Canucks because that was one of the popular teams asked, uh, asked by the fans for me to be. So right here you can see my stats, 97 offense, 95 defense, 82 goalie. So I improved them since I got them just over the offseason. Right here is the all-star game. I think I had a record of like 35, 20, and 10 or something. And uh, the player that made the all-star game was actually who I least expected. It was Chris Tanev. 82 overall defenseman made the third line defense as well. Corey Schneider made it as the backup goalie. And right here is the trade deadline. And I wanted some uh, more depth on forward because I had a couple injured forwards and I knew I had to get something. So I made, went and made a trade with Toronto. And what I did was I traded um, for Joel Colburn. He's an 83 overall two-way center. And he's got B-minus BB potential. And I ended up giving them a prospect forward who's injured right now, but he's uh, 75 overall with B, B minus B potential, as well as my first round pick in this year's draft, since I got a lot of picks from last year and I have a lot of good prospects coming up. And uh, luckily, Toronto accepted the trade, and uh, that helps my team out a lot. And um, after that, there was a guy in waivers, Maxim Gontrov, 80 overall Russian defensive defenseman, B, B minus C potential, and I decided to keep him. And uh, he plays in the NHL this year, but next year I actually come up to the NHL. And um, right here at the end of the year, I'm 44, 29, and 9. So, pretty good year. I think we finished something like 5th or 6th in the West. And uh, in the first round of the playoffs, we played the San Jose Sharks. And uh, in the first round of the AHL playoffs, my team played like the Admiral Nor Norfolks, whatever they're called. So, uh, right here, I'm just adding the lines up. As you guys can see, Daniel Sedin's injured right now. And I think somebody else might be injured too. Which kind of sucks, but what are you going to do, I guess? So, um, right here, uh, San Jose game. And San Jose won the first two games, but uh, luckily I won the third, so they didn't sweep me. But uh, they ended up winning the next two to take in five, so uh, that's pretty good, though, because my owner only expected me to get 36 wins and not even make the playoffs, so I far exceeded the expectations. And uh, next year, hopefully, we can win the cup. We still have yet to win the cup. And my HL team also got knocked off in the first round. Right here are some retired players. Many of the retired, as you can see. Uh, Daniel Cleary, Joel Ward, Rusev Betankel, Brennan Morrow, Chara, Jordan Leopold, Mark Street, Dan Boyle, lots of guys. Right here's my first round draft pick, or sorry, second round draft pick. I didn't have a first, and I drafted Shea, seven and a half all the way around. So he's pretty good forward. And right here I'm just resigning some players. And I had a lot of players resign. And Cody Hodges, I made sure was one of the ones I resigned. He's a really good young forward. I think he ends up being about a 90 or a 92 once he's fully maxed out for his potential. Uh, da David Booth wanted like five million, so I didn't end up resigning him. Uh, Daniel Sedin wanted ten million, so I let him go to free agents, knowing that he wouldn't get resigned because. Usually when anyone wants over 10 million, no team signs them because it's just, it does financially doesn't make any sense. But I'm just, yeah, at the end of the summer, I end up signing them when he's much cheaper. So that's something to do, guys. Don't sign them when they want that much money. Wait till the end of the summer. Well, sometimes they're even half the price that they originally were. But I made an offer to Alexander Edler. I made an offer to Goncharov. I decided I'd release uh, Keith Ballard simply because I don't really need him. I've got like 80 overall defensemen, and one of them... Uh, it played in the NHL last year, and I end up, I sa end up signing him for a uh, qualifying offer, which is really good. I can't believe he accepted it, and uh, since he'll be playing in the NHL, I got him for the qualifying offer on a two-way deal, so whenever I need him, I can call him up. As well, I noticed I needed another AHL goalie, so I called P uh, I signed P.K. Subban's brother, so that was pretty good. He actually has pretty decent potential. As well, I signed UC Jokinen to replace David Booth, and as you guys can see, at the end of the summer, I ended up signing Sadin, like I said, for $8 million. So it was a really good deal. I ended up... Uh, only being under the cap by about a million and a half. Right here, my lines you can see are pretty good, I think. And then right here, my defense lines. As well, guys, on uh, the forwards, Patrick Coletta was hurt, so he would have played that fourth line left wing where the 75 overall guy was. And right here, the AHL lines I'm just showing you really quick. So, hopefully, you guys enjoyed the video, guys. Right here's my stats 100 offense, 93 defense, 88 goalies. And um, if this video gets 20 likes by sometime tomorrow, guys, I'll upload another NHL video tomorrow, as well as a video as I was just going to upload, which is a new FIFA video. And besides that, guys, thanks for watching, and have a nice day. Goodbye. Follow me on Twitter. You'll be the first one to know when I'm holding an open lobby or tournament, and it's an easy way to talk to me.